Well, hello, my pretties, my cuties, my uglies. It's Stefan Satani, host of a Comedy Advice podcast. And I'm here to give you just a little bit of a tour of what this episode will be. If you look to your left, you will see the fast forward 30 seconds button. And if you click that, you'll just jump right into the episode. But if you want to hang with me and uh, just chill for a little bit, exchange some words, well, actually just receive words in this scenario, I will not be listening to you. I'll just be talking straight through. But if you do want to talk with me, exchange words, you can follow me on Instagram at a comedy advice podcast on Twitter. Um, you can email me at a comedy advice podcast at gmail.com. You know, send me some love or hate. I accept all emotional words. So that's just how I roll. And speaking of roll, I'm going to roll on into the main part of this podcast with special guest, Ali Siddiq, who, boy, this one was a treat because I am a huge fan of Ali. I think ever since I saw him on NBC's Bring the Funny, which I talk about. And Ali has led a very interesting life. He was selling drugs. He got caught. He ended up going to prison. And he ended up, I think he was sentenced for 15 years. He got out in six. And uh, then he ended up doing stand-up comedy. He's been doing it for about 22, 23 years. And he is one of the best storytellers out there. So we talk a little bit about that. We talk a little bit about his success. And we talk about Phoenix and how he's coming here to this great city of ours. Stand up live this weekend. Link is going to be in the show notes for those tickets. You can just nab them. All right, guys. Other than that, um, oh, Trash or Treasure, my new show, October 19th, Tuesday, 730 at the House of Comedy. Link is going to be in the show notes there. Other than that, I'm just going to keep this one short because that's how I do. I mean, I'm tall, but I like to keep things short around me. So it helps me feel more powerful. So that's why all my friends are Max, four foot nine, and their name is Max. All right, guys, I'm done with that. And I'm going to lead you into the episode here. We go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a Comedy Advice Podcast. My name is Stefan Satani, and I'm your host. Joining me today, very special guest. You may have seen him on NBC's Bring the Funny, Comedy Central's This Is Not Happening, or many of his specials, one of which he just recently filmed. Everybody, please welcome Ali Sadiq. Clap, 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 clap. Clap, clap, clap. What's happening, people out there <laughs> in the virtual world? One of people felt yesterday when they couldn't get on on Facebook and Instagram and all these and all these other situations that people couldn't get on. I know they was in shock. Oh, it was a trying times for first world countries. And I will say, Apple gives me a little diagnostic and it shows me a report of how much time I spend on Instagram and Facebook. And mm -hmm. um, I still spent 20 minutes yesterday, but it was all just trying to see if it still worked or not. So you spent 20 minutes on social media. I did. Today. And I didn't do anything. I was just like, does it work? Nope. Okay. Yeah. Go off. You Well, you better than a lot of people. Because a lot of people spent three to four hours trying to figure out why. They, I'm talking about unplugging, unplugging stuff that ain't got nothing to do with their Instagram. Why did you unplug your washing machine? Man, I'm just trying to make sure all the <laughs> thing. Just, just, just unplug the Peloton, just unplugging stuff. Just, man, I think I got too much stuff. My Wi-Fi ain't working. I got too much stuff plugged in. Man, the can opener does not work off Wi-Fi, sir. I don't even <laughs> I Go watched ahead. my brother do this for several minutes. Just, man, it's just not, it's not connected. Probably because it's broke, sir. It's broken. <laughs> you just you, like, you, you nothing. Nothing about this is changing anything. Nothing. It's not. I'm sure there were reports of crack screens because people were like, "I'm just not swiping hard enough. I need to go farther." So yeah, my th yeah, you know what's weird? People people just adjusted their drug use. Oh. <laughs> Wait, okay, I can't get on Facebook. All right, let me go to Instagram. Let me go to Instagram. Okay, I can't get on Instagram. Oh, God, I'm going to go to WhatsApp. Ah, ah, I can't get on WhatsApp. I need another drug. I'm going to Twitter. I'm going to Twitter. I'm going to Twitter. I'm just going to stay on Twitter all day. I'm, I'm Twittering. I'm, I'm tweeting all day because I need to do something social media related. Oh, my Twitter went down. Oh, my God, I'm going to Snapchat. I go, does anybody have a Tumblr? I need a Rumbler. I need a Twitter. I need a I'm TikToking. Ah. Ah, I want to TikTok now. I, want TikTok. I need social media, so I'm, I'm, I'm addicted. Hey, oh, you man. Do know, if you do know you have children, and you can just go play with them. <laughs> uh, you know, 
I mean, how about doing something with a human being? You know, like how about it? Uh, the, the, but they're like, no. Weird. Yeah, yeah. No. I can look at pictures of them, but I'm not gonna actually spend time with my children. Oh no, oh no, I'm not. I'm not spending time with no humans. Why would I do such a thing? <laughs> the only human, the only human I want to spend time with right now is tech support. Why is not my Instagram marketing? Right. <laughs> oh my god! That, yeah, some Indian person saying. What I listen to me, listen to me. Did you have to? Did you take out the SIM card? Like, shut up. The SIM card has nothing to do. The way that did you turn the phone off and did back on? And then what happened? It's still not working. Did you try oh, taking right. turning off the Peloton? Did you try that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna just lean, lean it. It's, it's big. They not even on the FaceTime. They lean in. Interesting if you did all that. I don't know. It was like, first of all, that was a horrible um Indian accent I did. I, I got real Italian like it towards the end. I was like Italian Spanish. It wasn't even Indian no more. I don't <laughs> well, <laughs> Mama Mia. That was it was a great accent for me. I felt like you did you did a great job. And and I, Ollie, I, I started dwindling towards the end, like, no, oh, that's I'm quite sure that's Puerto Rican. I'm, I'm going to say that. <laughs> that's, that's, that's very broken English right now, sir. You are not actually speaking any type of Indian language. <laughs> <laughs> Did you try turning it off? Pinche pendejo. God. Yeah, I heard yeah, a little Spanish. It's, yeah. It's very mixing it up. <laughs> but that's what it's all about. It's it's making sure everyone feels included. So I feel like you've done a good job there. And I, I also, I wanted to talk about making sure spending time with people, making sure people are included. I am unfortunate in living in Phoenix because I did not get to be in Houston during the time of you filming your special, your newest special, Very Frowned Upon. And I was going to ask, how did, how did that turn out? How did it go? Um, Very Frowned Upon turned out really, really well. I know most people are going to think that this is Very Frowned Upon because what I do is I have a working title for a special mass majority of times. And mm -hmm. then people, then you film it and then people try to leak it and all the rest of that. So unfortunately for all the people who think that this special is called Very Frowned Upon are really going to be upset because it's not called Very Frowned Upon. <laughs> it's going to be called the domino effect. <laughs> the oh, fast <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, what I do is when I'm filming a special, I, um, well, I'm not saying I don't have any money. I just don't have no extra money to be bringing in a, 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 the people to put the phones in the pouches and lock it and that's a cost. Uh. So what I would rather do is film two, two different shows and you not know what's gonna be on the special. You just, you didn't know that the first 30 minutes of the first show is actually not on the special. The last 30 minutes of the first show is on the special. And the first 30 minutes of the second show is on the special. So they didn't, the, when I, we recorded two shows. So the mm -hmm. people who came to the first show only got 30 minutes of the special. And the people who came to the second show only got 30 minutes of the special. So if anybody filmed it and tried to put it out or do some crap like that, they don't, they not gonna have the special. They're gonna be like, that's not what I saw. Like, <laughs> and the name is changed and the cover is changed. So good luck, Nigeria and China for boot, bootlegging me. Good luck. Ali, I feel like you need to be on the next Oceans 14 because I felt like just the major twist happened there. It's like, nope, new name, new material. And, uh, <laughs> that was that was fantastic. Um, Same and, and outfit. I, Same oh, I thought they were outfit. gonna fix. I thought they were gonna change that in post too. Just this this unrobing of a new new attire. Oh no, nice. No, I I, I wore a Louis Vuitton tracksuit um, nice. in the in the special, and it's going people are gonna see this tracksuit. I don't care nothing else about nothing else in the special. It's, you're gonna see this tracksuit though. 
That's 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 what we spent a lot of time on. We we spent less time on the material and more time on the track seat. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do say appearance appearance makes uh, a big impact. So I'm glad that Better got checked it. off. I'm oh. trying to sell this special. I'm trying to sell this special as a supermodel. And then that's the- <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get this thing out. I'm trying to get representation from Louis Vuitton. And, and that's what I'm doing. I love it. It's uh, it's new material and you're promoting the fall line of Louis Vuitton. Did you do a couple catwalks man, as well? Man, do you want to be on the promotion team? Because I see you got this, you got the plan down, sir. You know what I'm this is this is comedy slash fashion. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh that's brilliant i cannot wait for the special to come out i also i can't wait for you to be in phoenix this week the 7th through the 9th at i was it stand up live tempe improv i'll have the link in the show notes for it um is yes. it, i'm gonna ask is there well one will the louis vuitton tracksuit be de- be debuting in phoenix and then um it, how is the material gonna be are we gonna have a little taste of the domino effect, or is there going to be some new material? What, uh, let me tell you what Tempe, what Tempe is in it for, though. They win it. Tempe is definitely winning because I have to tape, I have to record a new special on a network. Let me not say the network before the paperwork is signed, but on the 25th, I'm supposed to be filming a new special. And this special here is working title again just for the thieves um this special here is called is it safe to say just know it's going to be a twist in the title but is it safe to say is the working title and i'm going to do the i'm going to do a lot of the things that i'm going to do on the special but i'm not going to do it every show i'm gonna i'm gonna pick 20 minutes from the special i'm gonna do one story from domino effect I'm going to do maybe 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes of the new stuff within within the confinements of hiding it within other other things I want to talk about. But, you know, I'm going to go through a list of albums. People don't know that I still have two albums that, you know, I'm getting ready to I'm getting ready to drop and I'm going to do some of the stuff off of um, Dope Without Association, which I, I really pretty much like this album and the um the other album I'm probably gonna do this this spin about Willie this dude named Willie Dynamite. So it's it's you know me just going through some some stuff that I I may venture into a, a guy in the gym today brought up a uh um bless you a guy that um Jim brought up a um a joke that he hadn't heard me say in a long time and uh-huh. he's like man when I haven't heard you tell this story in a while and, I, and it just brought to my mind I'm like man I kind of forgot about that story which is which is not far-fetched for me because I tell I have so many stories that I do in so many different sets it's it sometimes I don't get around to doing everything Mm, I see and I I have to admit so the first time that I had seen your work I I had um it was actually when I was doing some research for Orlando Leba and so I was watching some clips of NBC's Bring the Funny, where I think it was you, what, he went on and then you went on. And I was mm-hmm. absolutely blown away by how funny you were. It was the story about how you played basketball against some younger guys and ended yeah, up yeah. not going so great. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I just, I was in awe by the, the sheer energy that you brought to the stage and how you were able to use the, the, the chair or the stool, the microphone stand. I mean, at one point when you were talking about when you were on the gurney, you were just laying horizontally uh, like a reverse <laughs> plank uh, um, on, the, on the stool. And I was just like, man, this is brilliant. The way that he's able to vivify his words with acting it out i mean using these props and just making it so funny and um and to to the point of your stories i know that i'd seen the the different stories that you had because you had multiple stories on comedy central's this is not happening you had the three stories the mexican Mexican got on which is which is a title of his prison ride but it's i just go with mexican got on boots that's what people call it so affectionate um mitchell and (laughs) Mitchell and the mushroom story. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah. Yes. I um I really I really believe I really believe this that not not just not just in this climate. And if 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 I was to ask right now, and I'm and I'm being very honest, somebody say, who you think the best storyteller is right now in this climate? I'm like me, hands down me. But I know they would probably try to give it to somebody more popular than me that they hadn't seen. But even those people would be like, nah, I'm not, I'm not we're close to as good as him when it comes to telling a story. Mm-hmm. But if I had to go across maybe since comedy started, I would say of, of all times. And mm-hmm. of, if, if we want the best storytellers of all times is going to go Bill Cosby, George Carlin, and then everybody else after that, whether it's Joy Diaz, Eddie Murphy, we in a we in a three-way tie between like five people. You know what I'm saying? And I'm yeah. I'm I'm in the I'm in the lead. It's like it's between me, Joey Diaz, and Eddie Murphy. It's so close. Like, like I don't know. It depends. Like, are we going on skill set? Are we going on who you know? You know what I'm saying? Skill set, uh, he's in the lead. Who you know? Quite sure, Eddie Murphy. I get it. Yeah. But yeah. I think that those three stories, what people were actually listening, knowing and understanding this is a story being told that's comedic. I think those three stories finally gave people the eye opening, like, yo, he's really, really, really good. Like he's his storytelling abilities are way beyond the 20 years he's been doing. Like this is a vet. Like I don't I don't think nobody I don't think nobody in this business can can hold me with a story. You can probably Jokes, I get it. I understand them, you know, and they very depend on who. Some of the things that I've laughed at the hardest are something that somebody else wouldn't even understand. Like I've laughed the hardest when me and my friend, we on a we just waiting on the plane, and a man got off the um the plane, and he literally had on a jumpsuit that was dirty. Like in my mind, why would you be flying in dirty clothes? But Marcus, when Marcus said what what he think happened, that man said he went there talking about, baby, what the hell is my sweatsuit at? My lucky sweatsuit. She said, it's in the dirty clothes. It's dirty. He's talking about, I don't give a shit. Bring it here. You know what I'm saying? And he got on that, he got on that plane with that sweatsuit on. And when I think about that, I laugh so goddamn hard. Like, Cause I'm looking at this man with this. I I'm looking. At, I ain't got. A, I was there when this man got off his plane with this dirty ass sweatsuit on, and I was like, I wanted to know what happened, and it was just that simple. Baby, where's my sweatsuit? You say it's in the dirty clothes. Well, bring it here. You know it's my lucky sweatsuit. I gotta wear that. Boy, I was. <laughs> but th- those are the things that I would I would sit. I would think back on me and you doing yeah. doing these voices. This is so. It's so racist. A white guy and a black guy doing other ethnic group voices. It was so racist. And I would just laugh. I'm gonna laugh all day about this shit. I'm like, me and me and this white guy was terrible. We had the most, it, we was all type of nationalities trying to do an Indian. <laughs> no, that is definitely Afghanistan right there. That's not even there's no point. <laughs> Afghanistan. Um and, and, and trying to name places that we think that we doing like and other and I know it's people watching like that is not Indian that is so not Indian that is so not Indian it's Indian people like neither one of them neither one of them are <laughs> don't audition for no Indian roles you are here <laughs> like I got I got offered this role uh, the audition for a role and the dude uh-huh. was not the dude was Nigerian in the in the piece. And I just refused to audition for. It. I'm like, yo, I know for facts that I cannot do a Nigerian. My family is a Haitian family. I'm not gonna be able to stretch across the other. Look at if just imagine me on the sitcom trying to do a, a Nigerian when I couldn't hold an Indian for five seconds. I didn't hold an Indian. I was so 
I'd be the worst Nigerian. They'd be like, I don't, is he, is that Trinidad? I think that's Trini. I think that's kind of Trinidad right there. It's Trinidad today. <laughs> like, it's getting I'm, a little I'm, far and closer to the continent, but it's still so far away. <laughs> I, this, they would do so many takes. They'd be like, Ali, you was Nigerian for that sentence. And then all the rest of them sentences was so Southwest. You are Southwest, sir. You are from Houston. Like, my, it would be so terrible. Right in the middle of, I go, I go just straight Chinese. I'm like, look, 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 I do not know what, what is this? <laughs> oh my God. He's the worst sitcom. He's the worst actor ever. He's the worst. Like, see, that's why I don't put myself in positions like that. Because people be like, he is the worst actor of all time. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what? That actually reminds me of all of those Avengers movies. You know, the guy, Chris Hemsworth, that played Thor. They have an accent coach that I guess did so much work. They put that credit, like the third name at the end of the credits. Because he, I, I don't know where he sounds like he's from. But I, it doesn't sound natural to me. At first, I'm like, is that a little bit? Is it Nigerian? Is it, is it is Indian? It I'm not sure. Scotia? What is he talking? Like, what <laughs> language is this? Is it glue? Do he have glue in his mouth? What is he doing? Uh, yeah. Like, you be watching the videos, and every time he talks, you just lean towards the camera. Like, what the fuck did he just say? Yeah, yeah. What? He's like, hello, like, key brother. And you're like, what the fuck? Where did this come? That doesn't sound like Norse to me. It's like Rocky and Drago. And it's like Sly, Drago, and what's that damn, the Terminator, all talking at one time with a splash of Samuel Jackson out of nowhere. You're like, what the, my brother, you're like, you know something? <laughs> I don't want him on the Avengers no more. I don't want him to be a man. Don't give him no talking roles. Just let him fight. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Just put, make him like Bane or something. Just put the face mask over him so he doesn't have to talk. He can just, you know, do muscly My things. And name of just go fight, Thor, because you are, I don't know if you Aquaman, like, what are you saying, sir? Like, <laughs> Oh my gosh, that is that is absolutely beautiful. And going back to the storytelling, I mean, I I also my wife. I'm a huge comedy fan. Wife, not so much. We're laying in the bed, and I'm doing my research, listening to your bits. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna show her the uh, the prison riot story. Mexican got on boots, and she usually she'll watch for about two minutes, and then she'll go back to her phone, scrolling on Instagram. And this was not the day that it was broken either. So she's going and, and she starts watching and I look over and she's still watching and it's like 10 minutes in and she's still watching. And she was like, that was so good. And we <laughs> talked about it for another five to 10 minutes because really, I mean, in that story where there is the emotion probably that you were going through of pure terror of like, <laughs> I need to get a knife or I'm going to get stabbed in this riot. And and from the Mitchell story of like pure anger and <laughs> the mushroom story where you're like, uh, I don't know what's going on. And there's this pure craziness going on from the effect of the mushrooms. <laughs> you're able to take these emotions that are probably, if somebody else is telling that story, it's like, I was terrified, I was pissed or I was so scared because I had no idea what was going on. And you you were able to ring it for all the comedy that it was worth and bring that in and just make these funnies or make these stories hilarious. So uh, I I don't have that much of a, a uh, let's say my opinion might not matter that much, but from what I see in my perspective, your stories from the, I don't know, 150 comedy comedian guests that I've had on it have been phenomenal. So I, I think that your stories are, are absolutely incredible. This is the thing. I, I, and I tell people this all the time. When people take the time to look at my material for actually what it is, not what they want it to be, if that makes sense to people. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. A lot of times people watch stand up and they want it to be who they already like, they are similar to it. And they not, they don't give the person that they don't allow their mind to open up to what the person has to offer. 
what's always humbling to me is like what your wife did. See, you actually wanting to listen and mm -hmm. you have this, you have in your mind, you actually want it to be good. Cause that's how I, I listen to comedy. I listen to comedy, even if it's a stranger that I've never heard of, I want it to be, that's the reason I'm listening. I'm listening to want this to be good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When somebody listens to you with no enthusiasm, like this was something that you just showed her. And, and, and I know how a wife is. I know how a person is when they not interested. I'm, I'm over here doing my thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep. No, 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 go back. What did you say? And no, and that, and that's that means a, a lot to me on on every level because it's this: you got exactly what you wanted. This shit is good. So let me share with somebody who don't give a shit about it. And then this shit is good. So that's the way that everybody has to understand that. You say your opinion doesn't matter. Yes, it does. Because the layers of why opinion matters to me. It's not just the, oh, you was a you was a good job. Because even when somebody tell me, hey man, I think that you're good. And, and I'm and I'm and I need them to understand that I'm trying to get better. I somebody they have to understand. You may think that I'm good because this is not something that you do every day. I mm -hmm. do it every day and I just want to be better than what people think that I, I, in my mind, I tell people I'm not even close to what I actually want to be yet. And if Mexican got on boots or Mitchell or any of that is good, they have to understand I haven't tapped into other things that like this new special is the layout of not I, I was in prison mm -hmm. not that I got home but what was the mindset of how I even got there I'm saying so I gotta go back to 1983 and then bring you forward and I can't even in an hour I can't even give you the arrest and what happened that day and I, really, I can only give you up into the mindset of when I started and the things that happened when I started so now that's just from 14 to 15 16 so yeah. now I still got 17, 18, 19 to go. Do what happened in those three years that now shifted me into the prison. So if you go back to, if people listen to how I tell stories. So Mexican got on boots. I tell that story first. Why? Because this is when I was young and naive and got to prison. I'm young and I, I don't know anything. I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm just mm -hmm. in this position. So now... When it gets to Mitchell, I'm 22, 23. And so now I've been here and I've become very vulnerable in this, in this air, in this climate, in this temperature that I'm in. So now I got to show people the advancement of this. So this is one step. This is advancement. <clears throat> now, because I, I, only, I did prison riot, and like I had already been doing stand up for 17 years. I'd already been on TV shows and all on yeah. own things. But this is just a different side of me. So now I do those two stories. Now it's another opportunity to go on the story. And let me show people how I can navigate this. I'm gonna do a story about what happened to me in the second season of this show. Just something very lighthearted, taking me right back to being young and juvenile and but i'm older and i still have these same youthful experiences with things that i don't know 
You know what I'm saying? Like if you, mm. if he and you, if, do you camp? Do you camp or kayak or hike or do any of that? I've attempted it. Yeah, not You've great attempted at it, it, right? Yeah, yeah. So have you been? Have you been out with somebody who did that? Yeah, yeah. Now watch this. I, me, and you both have attempted, right? Yeah. But if we took somebody else out that have never attempted. We look like fucking geniuses. We look like we we don't we don't shit. You know and we not got this in the in the wild to do this wild and, and do everything, kayak and jump off gear barns or bear or whatever. We not him. We not him. But I know enough. I know enough. I don't even know enough. I don't even know enough. <laughs> I don't even know enough to even tell you what I know enough of. I don't know nothing. I'm going to read them. If we go out and pitch a tent, I'm going to read the directions the whole time. I'm like, no, nah, yeah, now nah, you got to go too. I think now nah, that not ain't right. <laughs> I'll put up a tent. I'll put up a tent at the beach and that shit blown down the thing and I almost killed several elderly people. I'm like, <laughs> come on. Academy tent has given me, I didn't put the spikes down right. Who, who, I, I, you think I'm going to spike something on sand? Like, what y'all want me to do? I need a cement bucket or something. I don't know, but <laughs> I, hey. I, I am not skilled with the wilderness. I'm not. That's, that's I'm, more of a, I'm more of a math metrics type of guy. Like, <laughs> 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 like I'm more of a. I'm more of a. Nah, I don't. That's too much. That's too, I, the CDC needs me. I'm more of a chemist. <laughs> Put a little bit more of that. You know, I grew up with a chemistry set. I made blue color when I was when I was young. Didn't know if it ever worked, but my mama didn't ever use it. But yeah, I'm more of that guy. Yeah, I'm more of a I'm more of a not camping guy. But the worst thing <laughs> is my wife, she she comes with me. So she's really good with, with this type of stuff. She's able to pick it up. She's good with her hands. So after she watches me fail building a tent then she'll put it together in like 30 seconds which makes me mad and i would trust and i would trust look you you think that makes you say okay watch this one just throw this out there yeah i know i have it i have 11 o'clock but i'm just throw this out there because i want to tell yeah. the story um so a tent hey brother no no judgment no judgment on the tent it's a tent you not that's not an everyday thing, you know. You not you don't you you not rob you not rob sir. You don't know how to pitch tents. You're not you know you not that that's not your thing. But can you change oil though? Oh no, I, I okay can't good. So, so now 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 you have made me very comfortable. I will share. Okay. I will open. Okay, so I'm dating this woman who father um is a mechanic. Like cool. she. She should be she should be on a pit crew for NASCAR. She knows <laughs> everything. So, sir, if you're talking about experiences in your life, just try going, try the lady who you dating sending you to AutoZone to get oil. And and she know you don't know. Cause and it's but one, I blame my father because I should know. So I'm in that, and then you have to call back and say, you, you don't even want to look at the man. You looking at the man, don't look, listen. First of all, <laughs> you couldn't figure the shit out. So I'm, I'm gonna have to make this call. Stop laughing. Um, hello? Mm, don't really want to ask you this, but what, what weight oil did you say? 30! <laughs> um, how many, how many you need? See, this the shit, this, this, this your part. You, you like this type shit. This, you, this how you talk to the man. You, you like this type shit. How many, how many do I need? Five! <laughs> do she need a filter? Hey, nigga, stop asking me to ask a shit. It's not cause you, do you not, do you not know this shit is embarrassing? Okay, wait a minute. Okay. Yes, we need a goddamn filter. What is wrong with you? Oh, my God. <laughs> we need, we need, we need five. So 
thirties and a filter. Just put it <laughs> when you don't know and someone's yelling at you and you like, I should know. And other men are in the store like, see, that's the part that people don't understand. This, it's just not me, this man talking. It's other men in the store and he's like, my brother, I don't mean, I don't mean to be in your business, but was that a woman on that phone? She sent you up here? Yeah. My daddy, my daddy like go, go like a master my daddy. No. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want, you don't want to call that lady and ask her not another question because she's very irritated with you. And you have never felt like this before. This is never, this is not a feeling that you have experienced. Like a woman yelling at you about some man shit. Like you don't know what type of oil, you don't know your. I called her one time and asked her, where do I find the VIN number? I will never call again. <laughs> Look, come here. Look, and, and see, since, he, since I didn't do it, I'm going to have to learn to teach him. Why your heart beat so fast? I don't want him to slow down. Why? But it's beating. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna be. He's he's going to the Olympics in four years. He'll be in the Olympics boxing. So he's gonna have to get used to doing interviews. But right now, he got this going on. Right oh now, no! Close that, close that, close that door. Get you. Get this. I'm in his classroom. I'm in. I'm in my office that they turned into a homeschool classroom. That's what. That's where I'm at. Close the door behind you, sir. Oh man, it looks. I, I was gonna say I didn't get to to comment on it, but the background looks lovely. I like the A with the orchids behind it. It looks like, and you yes. look like you're on the cover of Vogue magazine. To be honest, it looks very chic, sir. If you saw the rest of this place, you would, you would not be as impressed. You was like, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> To this side is a peloton, which is very not used. It is very not used. Is a is a peloton over there, the big one, which is very unused. If anybody out there would like to buy a peloton, you know what I'm saying take over the 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 yeah, it's unused. This one this link is way, gonna be in the show notes for the Peloton right below your show dates. That's great. This is my office, and I was doing my podcast out of here, and somebody decided to take a seven hundred dollar mic and just lay it, just randomly, just randomly, just anywhere in my office. I didn't Ooh. put it back in the box or anything. No trip. This is a seven hundred dollar some soundboard. The rope, the um, the this board here. Hold on, let me turn around. You see, you see that board? That board oh right my there? goodness! Oh my goodness! That was just just tossed to the side. Just a, I'm talking about all type of lights and a monitor up there. It's all sorts of things in there. But it has been commandeered by the people who live in this house. I have been. <laughs> it is. I live with pirates and Vikings. They definitely commandeer things. Oh my gosh! I live. They planted a flag. They, I'm talking. About, I saw the five-year-old sticking in the ground like this and said, this land has been conquered. <laughs> it's, it's so strange. It's the opposite in my house. My wife will take over my rooms, but she'll just style them. So I'll have, I have a plant now in my office. I've got a, a poster with an inspirational quote on it. I was like, I don't know if I asked for this. She's like, it's going to help you. I, I saw that you have a 20% increase in productivity if you have a plant in your in your office and an inspirational quote. So <laughs> there we go. I have a plant in an A. What does that A mean? Aspirations. <laughs> Attitude. Like either the A stands for everything. It's like, what is what is the A about? My aptitude and my attitude declares my aptitude. It make that this I just say things sometimes, and then people just go with it. I'm like, that's so good. Me. I've got a D on mine, and it says it stands for "Don't fucking lose your job because you're making the money." So <laughs> we need we need to have this house. Friendly okay. reminder, just a friendly reminder. Got you a D for what? Don't lose your fucking job. Like, <laughs> <laughs>
So your D stand, your D comes with a sense. It's like 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 destiny or nothing. Like no, it's a sentence. <laughs> yeah, and don't it, fuck up. That's what it says. Don't lose your fucking job. Damn it. Like, like, okay. The strong D stands for a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it's got two plants around it to soften the blow just a little bit, but it's still staring at me. So it's, uh, it is it's the it neon is. D. Yeah, it's, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, so Ali, I know um, you've got your 11 and I wanted to just wrap things up. Were you going to finish saying something? I didn't mean to cut you off. I was going so to give you, I was going to give you some advice, you know, I was oh. going to my advice section. I, I got my advice already set up too. I got it detailed too. Oh, wonderful. I am, I, if I, I was to ask for anyone's advice, maybe the A also stands for advice. Um, oh. <laughs> oh, no. set, set the question up because I'm, I'm ready. Watch, watch how good this be. Go ahead. All right. All right. <clears throat> this one. A, San, a fan, um, Sandy, sent it in from Reddit from the advice column there. It says, I don't like my grandma's cooking anymore. I can't cook for myself and I don't want to hurt her feelings or spend a fortune on takeout. Please help. I currently live with my grandma for college and I don't have the option of moving out. My problem is that I no longer like my grandma's cooking. It could be because she can't do what she used to do when I was a kid anymore or that I got spoiled after trying a couple high quality restaurant meals or whatever. I've been secretly ordering delivery food and hiding it from her because I don't want her to feel bad. But that's been taking a heavy toll on my wallet, especially since my allowance doesn't cover daily food. Is there a way to fix this? Yes, there is a way to fix this. Don't use your taste buds. Don't do it. If COVID <laughs> has taught me, if COVID has taught me anything, you can just really eat food to sustain yourself. Listen, let me show you. I don't leave you out with no without no example. This is your grandmother's food, right? You put everything right here. You open your side, you open all this, but you wide as you can get. You just swallow it. Don't you chew. Don't you chew nothing. You just swallow. You get all the nourishing and nutrients that you need in there, and you ain't tasted nothing. You ain't tasted nothing. <laughs> now, if, if you can't do that, if you can't do that. This is a good one. This is advice. Ooh. This is advice from a 97 year old man told me one day, man, my wife can't cook a goddamn thing. I've been eating her cooking for 50 years. She can't cook a goddamn thing. I say, how you do it old school? Ketchup. Best thing ever, I put ketchup on everything. I put ketchup on everything. Oh. I put, man, man told me my, I put ketchup on every goddamn thing. Anything she cook, ketchup on that shit. Ketchup make everything taste better. I don't give a damn what it is. Ketchup. And then did like and did like this and did did like this to me. <laughs> <Say it. laughs> I feel that is such good advice. I feel like I'm a little bit fucked now because I put ketchup on all my wife's food. So now that she listens to this, she uh give me a little bit of a look, but that's okay. I love it. The food's great with the ketchup. So that's <laughs> Condiments or lose the taste buds. Beautiful. I love it. Hey. Ali, you did not disappoint. Hey, I was waiting on, I know somebody was going to ask something that I was like, you know something? I got it. I, I'm sitting here with it. I was hoping that a comic would ask the question because I wanted, before I leave you, I would like to give some comics some advice. Young comics. Oh, please. Yes. Never think that the comedy club is against you. It may be somebody that works in the club that is not favorable favorable to you, or somebody who, because I, I worked in the club before, where a person who was a, a disgruntled comic didn't really achieve what he wanted to achieve in his game, and he was trying to make it hard for me at the show. Mm -hmm. And I just called my agent. I said, "Well, I think." That we about to we about to go home. He's like, but you go home like what? Like I'm about to go home. Like I'm finna leave. And so he called the owner. He got in touch with the owner of the club. The owner came to the show. Was like, oh no, we're not gonna let you leave. How can we make this better? And that's and that taught me that for years I would think 
Because somebody said that to me, man, these clubs, they blackballing me, they ain't let me in. These clubs don't know you. And it's like anything, it's like anything in life. When you first started your business, people didn't know you to go to you for that business. You had to gain they, they trust throughout everything. You don't, people don't give you promotions because you've been on the job for the first 90 days. They don't give you a promotion because of that. You have to work up to these things. So I advise young comics, man, work all of the angles of the business. Don't get caught up in like, cause it, it would, it would be ridiculous for a comedy club who survives off of people coming to the building to enjoy comedy. They can sell food and drinks and whatever to be against somebody who may get big and then be able to fill their spots even more. They just don't know you yet. And I've been in that and I've been in that position and I've been frustrated. I'm not telling you from a person who has not been frustrated before. I just got great advice when I was frustrated instead of people adding fuel to the fire. Oh yeah, they are doing that to you. They're, no, they're not doing that. They, they trying to keep their doors open. So when you get big enough to put asses in the seats, there will be a spot for you to do it versus they don't have, they don't even have the time to plot against you. And then they said, you give y'all this mindset. They don't even have the time. Uh oh, it's a comic that I don't know that is trying to get famous or trying to get good at doing stand up. Who is it? And I need to fool his righteous plans. <laughs> <laughs> If you think that's what club GMs and owners and promoters are doing, then you may need to go work for Amazon. Yeah. I, I uh, well, Ali, Ali, that is great advice, I feel. <laughs> and and I, it can be used almost for anything, too. I mean, people, I, I'd hate to put it like this, but people really don't give that much of a shit about you to plot against you. It's just whatever they do, it's just like, uh, yeah, I'm doing my own thing. I don't really care that much, but they'll they'll work with you if the, if you have interactions, but don't take it the wrong way. Don't it's think like too much about people, yourself. It's like the people who said, oh, this is a pandemic. They plan to do it. I said, they plan to do it for what? They, they, they trying to, they trying to population control, but you can't have an abortion? Like, I, what the fuck are you talking about? So, <laughs> so I just want to get it. I just want to be clear. I just want to be clear. So they put a they put a virus out to kill people. The same people they said can't have an abortion. It's illegal. Oh, okay. All right. Makes perfect goddamn sense to me. <laughs> we killing people. We killing people. But, but 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 you better have no damn abortion. Like, yeah, we want to kill people once they're out of the womb. That's the thing. You just gotta make sure you're out you know and you have weird. a life, and then you then you can. Die. You know what's weird? That American people think that the world is America. So therefore, when the pandemic happened to the That's world, right. when the pandemic happened to the world, America plotted. And, and Iran, Iran went along with the plan. Iran, we're talking about fucking Iran. Iran went along with a plan that America came up with to destroy the world? Okay, all right. I, I just want to know, Iran. We're talking about Iran, fam. I just want, I just want to know, am I, am I losing my mind? If any... This is what would have happened if America would have came over the world, if the world leaders would have came over the world plan and said, we're going to destroy people. They would have still been talking about, what you, you think Iran, should we, should we invite Iran? Should we invite Iran? And they, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know. Because Iran is going to go to the press conference. I'm talking you let Iran know that America got a plot. You know what I'm saying? Iran going straight to the press conference. They would in the whole meeting, just like this. I'm down. Yeah, I, I do it. We do it. No, no, no problem. No problem.
The president is trying to kill America. I have the plan. He told me the plan. <laughs> he told me the plan. I cannot believe it. He called me. He said, I have a plan. I said, what? You have a plan? You have a plan? Okay. 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 You have a plan. <laughs> you have a plan. I will listen to your plan. I will listen to your plan. <laughs> and then he's like, well, are you not telling my plan? No, 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 no. I will no, never no. tell anybody your plan. Why would I? No, 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 no. <laughs> The plan, the plan would be so exposed. He typing the plan as y'all telling me. No, no, no. Go back. Go back. I missed the word. What did you say? Yeah. Could you say that again? I've tried to tweet this. Yeah. <laughs> virus. He said virus is a new system. With how many people? Democrats and Republicans. <laughs> could, could you could you spell republicans my english is new and i'm just trying to i feel like we're nailing the accent by the way this is so good i think we may have gone back to india he had the end strong he had the end strong <laughs> even though we sound like everybody we sound like despicable me we sound like despicable me but we end this strong killing <laughs> <laughs> all the boys and girls that's how it oh god beautiful well <laughs> Well, Ali, will you respect black people and white people? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you type like this. Black people and white people. What? That's okay. that's the, uh, the the Iranian talk. Right? That's how they, <laughs> they, 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 is, they teach this is the Iranian. This is the Iranian villain. He types like this. His neck is on the exposure. He types. <laughs> space, space, no, no space battle, space. Black people, are you already? No, Russian, 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 Russian propaganda, Russian propaganda. <laughs> that, 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 when he plays poker, it's horrible because that's his tell. You can see when he's looking from side to side. You're like, do you have a good hand? No. So, oh, I have, I have, I have. no, I don't have a plan. <laughs> well. Ali, this has been absolutely incredible. Thank you so much. I feel like I've laughed way more than I usually do at 8 a.m. So thank you again. Um, I, I also wanted to ask really quickly, what have you got to plug? What have you got going on? Um, where can people follow you? Oh, like I'm, stuff? Just, I'm in Phoenix. I want people, I mean, I, I really want, the, I just really want this space to be just filled in Phoenix, man. I just, because I, I think I got a good, a good, had a good time last time, but I really just want to be in Phoenix, man, and just get this just get this material off and just have a good time in Phoenix. Phoenix nice. is such a duck away, you know, for people. It, it's a great place, man. I used to be in Scottsdale all the time at um, nice. another at another space. I'm happy that I'm I'm finally at the, the bigger venues, and you know, I just want to come out there and have a great time in Phoenix. Oh, that's going to be a great time. And a link is in the show notes for all you Phoenicians that are just craving some giggles and some great stories from this amazing storyteller. Awesome. Thank well, thank you so much, Ali. Man, we'll see you soon. Any, anytime. It ain't got to be anything. Just hit me up, man. You cool cat, bro. And that's the end of the episode. Thank you guys so much for listening. It was a pleasure for me. Hopefully it was a pleasure for you. If you guys liked what you heard, please follow Ali. Go see him live in Phoenix. Tell him you like the show, um, DM him, whatever. And then follow me on Instagram if you haven't at a Comedy Advice Podcast, TikTok at a Comedy Advice Podcast. Subscribe wherever you listen. Leave a review. Uh, subscribe on YouTube if you haven't. You can see my beautiful face. I just made a pretty face for all you listeners. You'll have to go on YouTube to see it. And Trash or Treasure, the 19th of October, 730. Be there or don't. It's your choice. Really, I can't force you to do anything. All right, guys. Thank you so much for all the love, all the support. And I'll talk to you soon. Gooch smooch. <laughs>